call and he kind of stands up like like um, chimps will do when they want the infant to come to them and the baby sort of it looked like the baby kind of leapt into his arms and he grabbed her at the same time and they came together the baby gave out this little scream I think of excitement really <laughs> And Mike immediately went to the fig tree, and Tia at that point had just reached the ground. And Mike handed Amy to Tia, and she just embraced Amy. And then all the chimps came to see Amy. And so I was really unable to see, but what I could hear amidst all those chimps was little pant grunt greetings from Amy to all these chimps. Thanks to Mike, the mother and daughter reunion went off more smoothly than Jill could have imagined. Little Amy, aside from being unwilling to let her mom out of arm's reach, seemed fine. But that was just the beginning of the miracle. Tia, who had been injured in the incident, swatted miserably at her wounds and kept putting the baby down. And then... Mike came to the rescue once again. He started carrying the baby for Tia. And he did so for two days until Tia regained her strength. He was apparently acting altruistically, which is supposed to be a human trait. As far as we know, Mike's not related to Tia. I mean, that's just not something an, an unrelated adolescent male does. I think that on a number of levels, this incident with Mike and Tia and Amy is yet another reason that we should really reassess the, the way we define ourselves and, and how we separate ourselves from other animals. But this is only the beginning of how the Fungoli chimps have been redefining their species and ours. The rains are late this year, adding to the misery of chimps and humans alike. Despite the heat, though, they're still chimps, especially the infants and juveniles. So there has to be time for mischief. And time for the adult males to show their stuff. But it's Jill's female chimps who have really been stirring things up in the scientific community by knocking humans down yet another peg. They're hunting with spears. This is their prey. Bush babies are little primates that hunt by night, but retreat into the hollows of trees by day. And this is Tumbo the rock star of spear hunting and the bush baby's nemesis. In 2007, Tumbo was caught on tape just after she had been stabbing a pointed stick into a hole in a tree. Then she sat down to enjoy a luscious meal of bush baby that she had killed with a weapon of her own making. It was a stunning moment. This is an amazingly significant event. The fact that chimps at Fongoli hunt with tools is just unique. I mean, we had never expected to see that with chimpanzees. In fact, that's something we've used to define our own species. Reaction to the news that chimps were hunting with tools generated tremendous excitement and some skepticism. The spear hunting in Fongoli is fascinating. And when I first heard it, I was intrigued. I mean, that is incredible to take tool use and have it be combined with hunting. Those are two very important aspects of human evolution. Before this discovery, uh, this activity of using a tool to kill prey was seen as a uniquely human behavior and even one of the defining traits of humans. Others were not exactly sure how to interpret the behavior, though, and not convinced it is hunting. The probing is uh, what happens when you see a hole and you put something into the hole to see what comes out. And uh, chimpanzees do that everywhere. Uh, hunting, I think of, as they see a prey animal and then they go after it. For her part, Jill's observations lead her to believe this is clearly hunting, not strenuous probing. 
That's not what the, the chimps at Fongoli are doing. Most of the time what they're doing is really trying to incapacitate the prey. And so what you see is such a forceful jabbing motion um, that in fact I've, I've described it as uh, reminiscent of the shower scene in Psycho. Could this be how our earliest ancestors hunted? With wooden spears? Because wood rarely fossilizes, the chances of finding such relics are vanishingly small. And the idea that tool use could possibly go that far back is highly contentious. But Jill's chimps may give us a glimpse into that ancient past, some five to seven million years ago. Proving beyond the shadow of a doubt that Jill's females are hunting is frustrating, though. Jill follows the males here, not wanting to habituate the females to human presence, for reasons frighteningly demonstrated by Amy's kidnapping. So she hasn't been able to capture a whole hunt on video yet. Of course, the chimps of Fongoli are blissfully unaware of the radical nature of their everyday lives. Their empathy. Their cave use. Their spear hunting are only the beginning of their extraordinary story. the morning in darkness, up before the chimps, and anxious not to be left behind as they awaken. Every day, Jill and her team each pick a different male chimp to follow, not wanting to habituate more vulnerable females with infants. And since it's mainly the females that hunt, it's all the more remarkable that she and her team have now witnessed spear hunting 90 odd times. In a very exciting new twist, they've seen adolescents, even young males, starting to try their hand at it. Today, Jill is following Mike, the chimp hero in Tia and Amy's near tragedy and she arrives just a hair too late to catch him in the act of spear hunting. But he's left behind a smoking gun, the spear itself, stuck in the hold of a tree. What has happened is that Mike has left his tool inconveniently stuck into the tree, and this happens, I think, like in one in 10 cases, it seems. And so Johnny's about to go up and retrieve it for me, because he's a master climber. Johnny Dondo Conte, Jill's project manager, is not only a master climber, he's a chimp observer of the first order. Eddie yeah, in. So this is a tool that Mike made, and it's um, it's a little 